when we build simulation models and we use it for decision support, we want to be certain to some extent or have some confidence in the reliability of our models. And a good practice is whenever you run a simulation experiment to actually perform multiple runs of the same experiment because every time it should actually produce different results. In this video I'm going to use the personal learning edition and illustrate how you can go about getting stuff done that is actually available typically only in the professional version. Now as a base model to illustrate this I'm going to use an earlier YouTube video that I recorded, a three-part video that focused on an honors module little problem that we use during a, a class example called basic assembly. That was recorded in the personal learning edition ver version 7.3.1 and I urge you to actually go through those three videos because we will use that model um, as our base. In that problem parts are arriving in a workstation, they are manually prepared by a group of workers, they are then batched in a jig 12 12 before they are sent to a CNC machine for machining. They are then unbatched when they're done and inspected. 65% pass are then packaged and shipped. Those that don't pass initially, the 35% undergo manual reworking by the same group of, of workers. They are then inspected again. 90% of them will then pass, packaged and get shipped and the other 10% actually have to be scrapped. Now this is an illustration of what the model looks like that we built in that three-part video. So what are we trying to get at? If you go to your simulation uh, setup and you go to the right hand side to the properties of randomness, we actually work with a fixed seed. And this is good for reproducibility, meaning every time that you run the model, you will produce exactly the same result. That is unfortunately not what reality kind of looks like. Um, so while you're debugging your model, a fixed seed is handy, but afterwards you actually need to um, create unique simulation runs. So let me demonstrate what I'm trying to get at. I'm changing the seed now to a random seed and just running our basic assembly model. I can speed it up a little bit. The model runs from 7.30 in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon. And let me just speed it up so that I can get to the end of the day. Let's run it at maximum speed. And what you will observe is that at the end of this typical day, we end up with 129 units of work in process. We shipped 2,962 and we scrapped 124 units. Now if I run this model again at maximum speed you will see that the work in process number of units shipped and the number of units scrapped actually differs from the previous run and that is because there is inherent uncertainty in this process and that is why we actually use simulation in the first place. Now you can run this model multiple times and record your key metrics for example the number of units shipped or the number of units scrapped. But that might be actually kind of quite tedious to run it, to stop it, to run it, and every time uh, writing down and recording what these metrics are. So what I want to do is actually show you that you can set up in your project a new type of experiment. But unfortunately, these compare runs and Monte Carlo um, experiment types are only available in the professional edition. So if you only have if you only have access to the personal learning edition, which is what we're using for teaching purposes, how do you perform good simulation practice, which is reporting on multiple simulation runs when you actually compare alternatives? So here's a quick trick on how you can actually do that. I'm changing the original model slightly. Firstly, I created in the original model, I let the output be written to a file called output.txt. And if I look at my finder, you'll see that the 
output is written into the same folder as where my model is actually located. So it's relative to my model. I'm going to change this now because I created an output folder and I want the output actually to be written rather to this output folder. So that is one little change that I am that I'm making. Secondly, I'm creating an empty file which is called output experiments.csv. And this is a file. Currently it's empty. Um, you can create it with Notepad or Notepad or BB Edit as I'm doing on the Mac. Any one of your kind of preferred text editors. The purpose of this file is going to be to keep track of all my ensemble runs. And with ensemble runs, I mean for every configuration, I want to execute numerous runs. In this particular case, we can actually say 100 runs. And what I want to do in, in this experiment is to keep track of how many units of work in process do I have at the end of the day, how many units have I shipped during the day, and how many units have I actually scrapped. So I want to keep track of these three variable values at the end of my simulation run. And the way in which I'm going to do that is going to my connectivity tab and I'm going to create two new files. The file is called output experiments. And this file that I'm actually creating, I'm going to call experiments input and I'm going to browse to that particular file Sorry, I'm in the wrong model yeah I'm navigating to that empty file called output experiments Let's change the files here and I'm setting it up to actually be readable I'm changing the character set to UTF-8 and this is a com comma separated file. At the same time I'm also creating a second file which is going to be called experiment output. This points to exactly the same file but it is going to be write append, which means if the file does not exist, it will be created. Or if it already exists, I will just add to the end of the line. I'm changing the character set to UTF-8 as well. All right, so the idea is that I'm going to read from the experiment file, see how many runs I've already conducted, and I will update my seed accordingly, create a new random seed, execute my model, and at the end of the model, I will then write the output of that specific experiment to the file. So the next time that I actually run my experiment, it will read it in, it will see that there are already other experiment runs, and it will just add to the existing ensemble. I'm going to add a couple of um, kind of things that I will use. The first one is called just a parameter seed. This is a integer value and I'm just going to use the date of this recording 2018-0606 as a default value for my for my seed. I'm adding a variable that I'm call, calling multiplier and it is an integer value and initially it will be set to zero. I'm going to use that to just update the seed based on how many experiments have already been executed in my ensemble run. And the key thing is going to be two events that I'm going to program. The first event I'm going to call EV start of day it will be 
it will only occur once and it will occur right at the beginning so at time, absolute time zero of my model and what I want to do here is I'm just going to write a comment that says um, update the random seed and in this section I'm going to read in my experiments file and I'm going to check how many lines are there possibly so I'm going to read the file line by line and as long as there is another line to read I'm just going to count them and the way in which you do that is by using a while loop I'm going to call my experiment file and I'm specifically calling the input one and there is a function or a method can read more and that provides me with a boolean in terms of yes is is it possible to read that file any further inside this loop I'm just going to read the line Not that I'm going to do anything with that line right now and I'm just going to increment my multiplier and that loop will keep on incrementing the multiplier for every line of output that has already been written then I'm just incrementing it again otherwise if there are no lines we will start counting at zero and although that is fine for people comfortable in programming um, it just makes more sense to start counting at one when you count your ensemble runs I now use this multiplier to get the default number random number generator and I am setting its seed the argument that I'm actually using is my parameter multiplied by the variable multiplier and the reason I do that is to make sure that the random seeds are significantly different from one another that they are not one two three but rather some big value multiplied by one multiplied by two so the the seed values are actually quite different And this will this event will only be executed right at the start of of my model now we've set up the model to run on the 14th of April 2016 from 730 in the morning until 430 in the afternoon so the second event that I want to create is going to be run right at the end of the day so I'm calling this EV end of day I use the prefix EV to just indicate that I'm working with an event it occurs once and I'm going to set the calendar date specifically that can be 2016 whoops 04 what was that value I think it was and I want this to happen at 30 in the afternoon right at the end of the day and the action that I want to be taken here is to write out the three key metrics which is the work in process the number of units shipped and the number of units scrapped and I'm going to create a string and use the string formatting facility in Java which is available in most programming languages I'm just going to call this line string format
I'm going to write out firstly an integer which will indicate the run number that I'm busy with. I'm then going to write out the number of unit uh, work in process which is an integer again, the number of units shipped and the number of units scrapped. The first parameter that I'm passing is the multiplier. Then the work in process. Then the number of units shipped. And finally, the number of units scrapped. This line I then write out to the same experiment file but in this case, I am pointing it to the output version, which is the writable version of the same file. And I'm using the print line function. And I'm passing in a string, and the string is this line that I've just created. So initially, what I have is an em empty output experiments.csv file. So if everything works out well, let's do a build. Doesn't seem I have any compile errors. So let's run this model and actually see what happens. Initially when I run the model at maximum speed, it complains that some of my variables are not set as integers. So let's just check that all our variables are indeed, oops, that is a double, that should be an integer, and its initial value is zero. That is a double, let's rather just change that all to integers. All right. I specified that the variables are integer, yet I passed it a double, so Java complains. So when we run, we see that at the end of the day, we note the number of units shipped, number of units scrapped, number of units in work in process, and this is our first run. When we now stop this model and we go and have a look at our file, we'll see that it actually wrote out to our CSV file. So initially there was no lines in this file, and now the first one is actually created. When we run the model again, we can stop it and have a look at our file, and we'll see that the second entry has now been written. So now it becomes a lot easier to just run, stop, run, stop, run, stop, run, stop, and keep on doing the this for the number of times that you're actually interested in. You can keep doing this until you're happy that you've got enough runs in your ensemble run. And the nice thing is every time you can see how many runs you've already done. And you can keep on doing this until you've got your 100 ensemble runs. If we now have a look at our text file, we see a file with 100 observations, one for each of our ensemble runs. And we indeed actually see that the number of units that passed through that were accepted differs from, from time to time. We can now analyze this in for example, R.
there is no header so I just have to make sure and there I have my 100 observations read in I can do a quick summary of the number of units of work in process I can do a quick summary of the number of units that were shipped and the number of units that were scrapped. If I draw a quick histogram of the number of units shipped, we can actually see that it varies by a bit. The nice thing is when you have an ensemble run is that you can now do more statistical um, analyses on this distribution in terms of the number of units shipped. So you might be able to say with 90% confidence that the number of units that you will be able to ship through this assembly line is between 2,908 and 3,006. Giving you a lot more certainty about the output and the metrics that you actually report. So if it is very critical to analyze, for example, the number of units that are um, being scrapped, um, You can say that you're 90% sure that the number of units scrapped will be between 89.9 and 122. I hope you will make that a standard practice of performing ensemble runs uh, whenever you do a, a simulation project.